Hey everyone! In the next two videos, I'll show you how I use Audacity and Camtasia to edit my videos and give them a more professional feel. I'll show you the basics of how I use these two programs, but this is not going to be an exhaustive tutorial, so if you want to learn more about them, you can always check out many excellent tutorials available for both these programs online. Now, I'll be showing you how to splice together your talking head videos with your screencast using Camtasia, and we'll use both Camtasia and Audacity to improve the overall quality of your audio. Okay, let's get to work. Okay, so what you're seeing on my screen right now are two things. One is a Word document, and this is a guide that I wrote. It's basically just a step-by-step -step guide on how I use Camtasia and Audacity to edit my videos. And at the top here, I have a little readme or disclaimer. It basically just says that I'm not a professional video editor. I am very much an amateur at this. So there are probably better ways to do what I'm doing. And if you know what those better ways are, please share. But this workflow works pretty well for me to produce educational videos. And I think it'll work pretty well for you too. By the way, it's good for both PC and Mac because both programs that I'll be using, Camtasia and Audacity, are available for both of them. And Audacity is free to download for either, and Camtasia has a free trial, and then you can pay for it if you like it. Now I've split this guide up into four parts, part one through part four. And in this video, we'll cover part one, two, or all the way through part three. So let's get to it. Now on the right here, you're seeing a finder window. And this is just my double fertilization video with all of my video files in it that I've been working with all along. So you see my master document here that we've worked with before. You see the images from my learning guide that we made in the last video. I have a folder with some video files here that I use for my credits that I put at the end of my videos. I'll talk about that later. And last, I have the three video files that I've produced. This is my screencast video, and these are my two talking head videos. So going to our guide, part one is basically just about organizing your video files. So the first thing that you should do once you've transferred your three video files, your screencast and two talking heads to your computer, is place those files into your video production folder. Now mine is called double fertilization video. That's the folder where I keep all my files in. And you'll want to put your three video files into whatever folder you're working with. Now you'll also want to rename them logically. So right now my screencast file, the video from Explain Everything, is just called double fertilization. That's what I titled it in Explain Everything. But I'm going to add the word screencast to the end of that just to tell myself that that's the screencast file. Now these two are my talking head videos and I'm going to rename them something logical as well. I'm going to call this one, this one happens to be the introduction, so I'm going to call this one double fertilization talking head intro. And I'm going to call this one double fertilization talking head outro. Because that's what it is. So when I go back to this folder later, it'll be easy to figure out which file corresponds to which video. It's also pretty important once you've moved and renamed your files, not to move them or rename them again once you've started working with them in Camtasia. That's because, that's because if you move them or rename them, Camtasia will no longer be able to find those video files and you won't be able to work with them anymore within your Camtasia project. So once you have them here and you rename them, leave them alone. Okay, so that's pretty much it for part one of my guide. We're done organizing our video files. Now on to part two. And in part two, we're going to splice together our two talking head videos with our screencast video. We'll also 
make the volume more consistent throughout the video, we'll do that using Camtasia. And then we'll export only the audio part of that spliced together video and create a new audio file that we'll use to edit the audio further in Audacity. So the first step is to bring all these video files into the program Camtasia. And here's the icon for Camtasia. I'm using Camtasia 2018, but if you're using a slightly different version, then Camtasia may look slightly different, but it's mostly gonna be the same. So I'm going to open up that program and go to File and New Project. Okay, and I'll make this bigger. Okay, and the first thing you wanna do when you open a new project is save it. Camtasia does have a very unfortunate bug, which as of this recording, I don't think has been resolved yet, where if you try to import media or multiple media into an untitled project while other projects are open, it could crash and even delete some of your video files. So that's a pretty serious bug. But to prevent this, all you have to do is just not work with an untitled project. Just make sure that you save your project as something as soon as you open it. So I'm going to save this as double fertilization. CMPROJ just stands for Camtasia Project. And I'm going to put this project file into my double fertilization video folder, just where I'm keeping all my other video files as well. So I'll hit save. Now a detailed tutorial of Camtasia is a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but I will take you through the various parts of the Camtasia interface. And as we go through the editing process, I'll just explain the features of Camtasia that I use. But if you wanna learn more about Camtasia, there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube, as well as on the Camtasia website. So I encourage you to check those out if you wanna learn more. Okay, and don't be intimidated um, by this program. Once you get the hang of it, it's, it's really not that bad. So there are various parts of the interface. On the left here, you have the menu, okay? And you can click on various things and, and various submenus will come up. Now this top one here, the one that looks like a movie clip, is the media bin. And to import your video files into Camtasia, all you have to do is drag your video files right here to this area. So let's actually do that. I'll bring up my finder window. And first I'm going to just import my talking head introduction. And you'll see a preview of it appear right there. Sometimes takes a little while to process because it is a video file, it's a pretty big file. Then I'll go down to my folder and next I'll import my screencast. And next I'll drag in my talking head outro. Okay, so those are my three video files that I'm gonna work with right in my media bin. Now, these other menu items can do many other things that I'll talk about some of them later, but most of the functionality of um, Camtasia I don't actually use. I don't use 100% of this program. But if you want to know more about what these various things do, you can check out tutorials on YouTube. So that's the menu and the media bin. Right here we have what's called the canvas, and this is where the visual of your video will show up. Now to make your video show up here and to actually work editing your video, you need to drag your video files from the media bin down here. And this is called the timeline. This whole region here is called the timeline. And it's called the timeline because this is where you can actually see your videos play. And you can see the, the little timestamps right here too. This is 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and so on. So you can see where you are in the video at any given time. So to work with your video, you drag your video down to the timeline onto one of the tracks, and it'll appear there. And I've dragged it into track one. You can put 
various pieces of media onto different tracks. And you can add tracks as well using this plus sign here. So I'm just going to add another track using that plus sign track three. You can rename these tracks, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave them like this. And I'll drag in my other videos as well. I want to put my screencast right after my talking head introduction, so I'll put it right there. And if I drag the playhead around, this right here is the playhead, and wherever this is, that's what will show up in the video. Okay, so I can drag the playhead around and it'll move through the video. Now to move through the timeline, you can do that in a couple of different ways. One is you can just drag the playhead around and it'll move around the timeline. Okay. You can also use this slider here to move around the video all the way to the end and all the way back to the beginning. And if you want to play the video, just put the playhead where you want Camtasia to start playing the video and hit play. Now in this video, we'll take a look. Okay. So let's add that last talking head outro. So I'm going to go all the way to the end of the video and drag my talking head outro after the screencast, which is where I want it to appear. Okay. Now during the course of editing your video, you're probably going to want to zoom in and out of your video just to view the details of it and maybe edit the audio a little bit. So to zoom in and out, you can use this slider bar here from minus to plus. You can press those buttons and it'll zoom out or zoom in, or you can just use the slider bar to zoom all the way in and all the way out. And the zoom always centers around your playhead. So it'll zoom in around your playhead and it'll, it'll zoom out around your playhead. You can also select various parts of your video and just play those parts. And to select a part of your video, let's zoom in a little bit here, place your playhead where you want to select it and drag either the green or the red part to one side. And that will highlight that part of the video that you want to work with. So we'll do that more later. But for now, let's just finish talking about the interface of Camtasia. Now, like I said here, and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Let's go back to the talking head. Okay, so here is the canvas and you can do various things with the canvas. You can crop how big or the dimensions of your video. You can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel and that won't change your actual video. It'll just change what's showing on the screen. So if you want to go close in on a part of the video or zoom out a little bit, you can do that just using the mouse wheel or this drop down menu right here. And if you have a video selected, you can also hit this button over here. And this is pretty important. It's called properties. And if you click that, whatever you have selected, whether it's audio or video, it will bring up a bunch of options that will allow you to modify whatever you have selected. So for example, because I have my video selected and I've clicked properties, Camtasia gives me a bunch of options to modify the appearance of this video. I can change the scale. Whenever you change something, an undo button comes up. So I'm going to undo that. You can change the opacity. You can even rotate the video around if you want to. You can change the positions of the video, so you can mess around with all that if you like. However, I usually don't change much about the video because I try to make sure that the aspect ratio of all my video files is the same. So there really shouldn't be too much need to modify the appearance of your video here. And speaking of aspect ratio, it's probably a good idea to when you're using Camtasia for the first time, go to preferences and make sure that in the project tab, the aspect ratio that you record your video in is the same as the Camtasia project. In other words, you want the size of this rectangle, which is the dimensions of what your video will be to be the same as the video when you're recording it. So 
As I've said previously, I'm using a four to three aspect ratio, so that's why I have that set here, but I recommend for you that you use a widescreen or a 16 to nine aspect ratio. So come into the preferences and click the project tab and where it says canvas dimensions, make sure that yours is set to a widescreen format, particularly the 1080p HD format. That's the one you're gonna to wanna to use for your videos very likely. So I recommend that you select this option, the 1080p HD option, the 1920 by 1080 dimensions. I'm going to keep this one right here selected, but I recommend you have this one up here because that will match your video of your talking head as well as the video of your screencast if you're using a 16 to nine aspect ratio to make both of those videos. I also recommend you set the frame rate to 60 frames per second and have this set down here to convert the entire project to 60 frames per second. So make sure you have those settings set before you start working with Camtasia. Okay, so now hopefully you're a little bit familiar with Camtasia. Let's go back to our guide and see where we're at. Okay, so we've spliced together our talking heads and our screencasts, so now they are in the same video. And if you didn't want to do any video editing at all, you just wanted to splice these videos together and use them as is, you can certainly do that. If you wanna do that at this point, just go to share and go to local file, and you can just export the whole thing as a video, and Camtasia will splice these three videos together into one video. So you can do that if you want, but I'm going to take you through how to edit these videos first. So let's go back to our guide. Okay, so our next thing we wanna do is make the volume consistent throughout the video. So we've already set our preferences to what we want, We've opened and saved our Camtasia file, naming it something logical. We've already put the two talking heads and the screencast into Camtasia. And the next step is to separate the audio and the video for each recording. And this is an essential step anytime you want to edit really any video in any editing program. This is among the first things that you should do. So this is going to allow us to change the audio and video separately. And that's pretty essential to be able to do. So to do that, very simple, in Camtasia, you go to the video file where you wanna separate the audio and video, and you click on it and it'll be selected. You can tell it's selected because it has a yellow outline around it. Right click on that, and then just click separate video and audio. And Camtasia will create another track with the audio for that video in a separate track. And I'll do the same thing for my screencast video, separate video and audio, and I'll go all the way to the end and do the same thing for my talking head outro. Okay, so now I can manipulate the audio and video aspects of my videos separately. Okay, so going back to our guide, let's see what's next. Now it's pretty important to make the volume consistent throughout the video. You don't wanna to have to make your students turn the volume up and down to listen to your video. You want the volume to be consistent throughout. So to accomplish that, the first thing we wanna do is adjust the volume of each talking head so that they are the same as the screencast. Now, how do I know what the volumes of the talking heads are compared to the screencast? Well, of course, we could just play them and listen to them. So I'm just going to play part of my screencast and see how loud it is and understand the functions of the various cells and tissues. Okay, now I'll play part of my talking head and see how loud that is. So that brings us to the end of module four and to- So that's pretty close in volume. I think my talking head might be a little softer and I can tell because the height of the waveform, the height of the audio signal corresponds to how loud it is. And I can get a better idea of that if I make this track, track number two, a little bigger. And to do that, I can just mouse over the top of it right here and drag up. So I can see the, the audio signal more clearly. And I can see that this audio signal is a little bit lower than this one. So I want them to match. I want them to be about the same height. So to do that, 
I can mouse over this line here until it turns yellow, and I can click and drag upwards, and it will make the audio signal stronger. It'll make it louder. So that looks like it's about the same. I'll leave it at about 150% or so. Now we'll do the same thing with my other talking head video to make sure that the volume is about the same as the screencast. So I'm going to use a slider and go all the way back to the beginning of the video, back to my talking head video, and I see that this one is far too loud compared to the volume of my screencast. So I'm going to drag the audio signal of that one down quite a bit, way down, something like that. Okay, I think that's pretty good, and I'm just gonna play the audio just to make sure. And in this video, we'll have two questions. In the last few videos, you saw... Okay, so I think that's about right. They're pretty similar in volume. Now I'll go back to my guide and see what's next. Okay, um, use audio points if necessary. So a nice feature is that you can really fine tune the volume of any part of your video. So if I zoom out all the way, I can identify if there are any parts of the video that are kind of way too loud compared to the others. Maybe you got really excited about talking about the ovule and said ovule way too loud for some reason, right? Um, so you can adjust that at this point as well. Now to do that, let's say I, I, see, um, I see these two points here in the video that have a pretty high audio signal. So I'm going to zoom in on that. Okay. And let's say that I just wanted to make this region and only this region of the video a little softer. I wanted to decrease the volume a little bit. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. The easiest way is to highlight the region where you want to change the volume and right click and click silence audio. Okay. Now, if we click on the audio track, we can see that the audio volume for that region is now zero. Now to bring it back up to the level that we want, we can mouse over the bottom of it here so this additional yellow line appears and click and drag upwards until we bring the audio to the level that we want. I think right about there is fine because it's pretty consistent with the other audio on the track. Now when I did that, Camtasia introduced what are called audio points, four audio points. Those are represented by these green circles here. Now you can put those in manually as well by just right clicking on this region of your track between the green line and the yellow line here, right here, and click add audio point. And I can add a couple of these, one here, one here, one here, and one here. And then I can control the audio volume for any point between any two audio points. So I can drag this one up and down. I can make it louder if I want to. So you can control the volume using audio points as well. Now let's go back to our guide and see what's next. Okay, next is fix the audio lag on your talking head videos if necessary. Okay, so in my video on talking heads, I mentioned that sometimes the audio in the video when you're shooting a video don't quite match up. Maybe your audio is a little bit behind your video, so the audio, for example, might not appear until after you've opened your mouth. And that can be pretty distracting for the viewer, so you want to make sure that the audio and video match up perfectly. So we can do that in Camtasia. Now let's go back to the beginning of the video and just look to see if there is any audio lag on this talking head video. Hey everyone. In the last video, we examined the structure of the pollen. Okay, now it's not too, too bad, but I do think that the audio is a little bit delayed, right? I really want the audio um, to be exactly matched up with the video. Now to do that, I have to move the audio track relative to the video track. So you can actually move this entire track right here to the left or to the right. If you move it to the left, if you drag this to the left, then the audio will come in sooner. If you drag it to the right, the audio will come in later. Now, to allow myself to 
move that audio track relative to this video track, I have to make it so that it's not butting up right against the next audio and video track. So I'm going to insert some time between these two, between the talking head video and the screencast video. And to do that, I'm going to bring my playhead right between those two videos and zoom in. And I'm going to zoom in all the way and make sure that I'm at exactly the point where this video, the talking head video ends and the screencast video begins. And I'm going to zoom out and then drag the playhead just several seconds or so. Even a second is plenty. And then right click and hit insert time. And it will insert some time between those two videos. So now I'll be able to move this audio track forward and backward if I want to. Okay. So now let's go back to my talking head video and make sure that the video and audio are aligned perfectly. Now this is much easier if you used the metronome in your talking head video and I'll show you how to synchronize your audio and video using the metronome in a second. But here I'll just do this manually if you happened to not use the metronome. So let's play the video again. Hey everyone, in the last video we... Okay, so I want to move the audio just a little bit to the right because I think it's just a little bit behind the video. So to do that, I'm going to zoom all the way in and it doesn't really matter where you zoom in as long as it has some audio signal that you can see. Now I'm going to click on my audio track and I'll drag it just a little bit to the right. Just one interval and maybe a second interval, just a little bit. And I recommend that you do this just an interval or two at a time and then view the video again and see if it looks good. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit once again and play it and see how it looks. Hey everyone, in the last video we examined the structure of... Okay, I think that looks a little better, so I'm pretty happy with that at this point. Now I'll show you how to do it if you use the metronome. So I'm going to go to just all the way to the end of my video, zoom out a little bit, and I just have a sample here that I've prepared. I'm going to bring that into Camtasia, and you can also just drag video right into the timeline. You actually don't have to drag it to the media bin first. Once you drag it to the timeline, it will appear in the media bin as well. So here I have just an example of a video where I'm using the metronome before I do a talking head. So I'll just play that. Okay, so you can see that it beeps and makes a sound at the same time. So that's how we'll be able to, to synchronize the audio and video because the metronome beeps and makes a sound at the exact same time. And all we have to do is align the beep with the audio signal. So let's do that. So once again, I'm going to right click and separate video and audio. And, oh, you can use the slider on the, bot, on the bottom here to uh, move around your video as well. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay. And go to this beep right here. And in fact, I'm gonna zoom in all the way. And I'm going to find the part of the video where the light first appears. So it's, it's off here. So I can see this, this um, audio signal here, that's when the beep is occurring. Now, if this video were perfectly synchronized, then that is also where the light should be coming on. So let's see if that's the case. Nope, doesn't look like it. The light is not on yet, and it's not even on at this point. Okay, that's where we see the light come on. So that, at this point in the video, is where the beep should be first occurring. So I want the beginning of this audio signal of the beep to be exactly where the light first comes on, which is at this point in the video, right where my playhead is. So once again, I'm going to click on my audio track here and just drag it to the right until the beginning of the audio signal coincides with where the light on the metronome first appears. 
So now it's in perfect sync. And let's zoom out and view it and make sure that's true. Okay, looks good. So that's how you do that if you're using the metronome. As you can see, this is a lot more um, precise than just trying to match up the sounds with the movements of your mouth. This is a much better way to do it. So I recommend doing this. It doesn't take that much extra time and metronomes are not that expensive. You might even have one lying around. Okay, so I'll get rid of that because I don't want it in the final video. Let's see what's next in our guide. Okay, so next I'm going to export just the audio part of my video. So really just this track, track two, which has all the, the audio on it. I'm going to export just the audio as its own file, as a WAV file, and rename that audio only because I'm going to use that file to edit the audio using Audacity. Okay, Audacity does not recognize video files. You have to make it an audio only file to edit it with Audacity. So to do that in Camtasia, it's pretty straightforward. You just go to share and export audio only. Click that. And I'm just gonna make sure that this file is going to my double fertilization video folder, looks like it is. And make sure that I'm exporting it as a .wav file because that's the file that I like to use with, with uh, Audacity. And I'm going to add audio only, just to remind myself that this is the audio only file for my video, and then click export. Okay, automatically reveals the file in the folder that it's in, and here it is. So this is the audio only for my video double fertilization. So let's see what's next in the guide. Okay, so now we're on to part three, where we're going to use Audacity to make the audio louder and more consistent, as well as remove some background noise. So to edit the audio with Audacity, First, we need to open our sound file in Audacity, and to do that, you can open it within Audacity, but you can also just drag the file right down to Audacity. That's the icon right here. And Audacity opens it up for us. So I'll give you a bit of an overview of the interface of Audacity as well. In the upper left here, you have just the normal video buttons play, pause, stop, rewind, fast forward, and you can even record audio with Audacity. So those are the buttons up there. Down here, you see the waveform or the audio signal of your audio track. And you can see the time labels up here. This is one minute, two minute, three minutes, so on and so forth. We also have some buttons where you can zoom in and out. So if you click on a region of your video, part of the waveform, you can zoom in if you want to take a closer look or zoom out once again. You can also right click if you put your mouse over the Y axis here, you can right click here or left click and zoom in and out vertically on the audio signal. And this is useful if you want to kind of try to visualize really faint signals or background noise. Okay. Now if we play where your cursor is, and you can set your cursor to any given spot in the recording and, and hit play, and Audacity will play that part of the recording. You can also highlight part of your recording and just play that part. So I'm gonna do that here. I'm just gonna highlight this part here and play it. The fertilized cells in seed development. Okay, so as that audio played, you saw the audio signal up here and this region of the screen right here, where it says minus 57 to zero, that is essentially how loud your audio is at any given point in the recording. So you can keep an eye on the volume of your video up here. And if it reaches zero or anywhere really close to zero, then you might start to get some distortion. So you wanna make sure that your volume is 
at least initially, probably at least less than minus three or, or minus six or so. Now there's lots and lots of other things that you can do with Audacity, but I'm not a pro here and I only use a minority of the functionalities of the program, which I'll show you how to do in a moment. So let's go back to our guide and see what we're up to next. Okay, so right now we're in part three, editing the audio with Audacity. We've opened the WAV file. And the first thing I do is I split the recording from stereo to mono. Now, you're seeing two audio recordings here, basically, two waveforms. And that's because this video was recorded in stereo, which most are nowadays. But someone who knows more about this than I do suggested that for voiceovers, I work with a mono recording. In other words, a recording that only has a single um, layer or track of audio. So to do that, I want to eliminate one of these two. So to do that, I um, can go to where it says the title of my recording, Double Fertilization, it's cut off there, and just click this downward facing arrow here and go down to Split Stereo to Mono and it'll separate those two. And then I can hit this X over here just to eliminate one of those. So now my recording is in mono. Let's see what's next. Okay, so next we want to use the normalize effect. And this is basically just going to make the recording louder. So you wanna make sure your recording is loud enough that it can be heard clearly. The normalize feature can be used for other things as well, but I basically just use it to make my video louder. So to normalize the volume of your video, you wanna select the entire track. So to do that, on a Mac, it's Command A. On a PC, it would be Control A. And so I've selected the entire track, then go to Effect and Normalize. Now the only really two menus I use here are the Effect menu and the File menu. So I go to Effect and Normalize. And I don't really know enough about Audacity to mess with the default settings and leaving the default settings as is has always worked for me. So I usually don't mess with those. So I'm just going to hit OK. And what you saw there is the audio signal get a lot stronger, right? The waveform is a lot bigger now. And that indicates that my video is now louder, which is what I want. OK, so let's see what's next. Now next is kind of an optional step and that is background noise subtraction, okay? And you have to be a little bit careful with this because if you have a lot of background noise, say you have like a loud air conditioner or something near your office or, or home where you're recording, if you try to subtract that background noise and it's too loud, your voice can end up sounding kind of electronic or metallic. So it's always a good idea to check what your voice sounds like afterwards, and we'll do that here as well. Now, ironically, the video you're watching right now actually has quite a bit of background noise, and there are two reasons for that. One is that I had to use a different setting on my microphone in order to pick up both my voice and the audio on my computer. And that setting generally just picks up a lot more background noise. The second reason is that I'm recording this in my office instead of in my closet because I have to use my computer to make this screencast and my computer's in my office, which has more background noise than if I did the same thing in the closet. Still, I think it's okay, and hopefully it doesn't bother you that much either. So anyway, to subtract your background noise, first you need to tell Audacity what part of the recording has background noise. So it can recognize that level of sound and then subtract that level of sound from the entire recording, okay? Now, recall that when I showed you how to record your audio for your screencast, I had you record 10 to 15 seconds of just nothing, of just background noise. And this is where we're going to use that. So I just know from experience from doing this that this is the audio for my talking head 
introduction, and this is the audio for my talking head outro, and everything in the middle is the screencast. And you could confirm this as well in, in Camtasia. So this is where my screencast begins. And I always record background noise right before I begin talking for my screencast. So my background noise should be right about here or so. So I'm going to zoom in on that area. Okay. And these hashtags represent five second intervals right here. So this is 30, 35, 40, 45. So right now I'm in about, oh, 38 seconds or so. So I'm just going to highlight 10 or 15 seconds right before I start talking in my screencast, and that is where my background noise should be. And if I'm right, I should see some audio signal here, but not hear any of my voice. So let's see. Okay, so that looks good. So there's some audio coming through, and that's basically what the background noise is. Okay, so this is the area that I want to tell Audacity has the background noise in it. So the first step in subtracting background noise is to go to Effect and Noise Reduction. Well, the first step is to highlight the region with the background noise, right? And I've already done that. Next, go to Effect and Noise Reduction. And Audacity is nice. It actually tells you how to do this. Select a few seconds of just noise, which I've done. So Audacity knows what to filter out then click the Get Noise Profile. That's right here, so I'm going to click that. Okay, Audacity has recorded the Noise Profile. Then I'm going to go to Effect, and once again, Noise Reduction. Whoops, I made a mistake actually, let me go back. Then I'm going to select the entire track, and go to, once again, Effect, and noise reduction. Okay, and that this is step two here, select all of the audio you want filtered, so that's my entire track. And then click OK to reduce the noise. And once again, I'm not messing with any of the default settings here. So I'm going to hit OK. Okay, and to make sure that worked, I'm going to once again highlight the region with the background noise, and I should not see any audio signal in it. So let's make sure that's the case. Okay, it looks good. I don't see any audio signal coming through here. So that means my background noise has in fact been subtracted. And I'm going just to check and make sure that my voice sounds okay as well. Hey everyone. In the last few videos, you saw how the male gamito fight Paula. Okay, sounds pretty good, I think. So let's see what's next in our guide. We've done our background noise subtraction. So now we're at this point and you know, you really can consider background noise subtraction optional. If it's not too loud and it's pretty constant, then it's probably not going to interfere with the learning of your students all that much. But it can make the video sound a bit more professional and it also can make some of the editing that you'll do later in Camtasia a bit easier. So if you can do this and your voice sounds okay afterwards, I recommend it. Now next, we're going to use the compressor tool. And the compressor tool is basically just another way to make sure that the volume of your recording is consistent. What the compressor tool is going to do is it's going to find the very highest audio signals, these peaks here, that are quite a bit louder than the rest of your recording and bring the volume of those parts of your recording down a little bit. So the volume of the entire video is, or rather the volume of the entire recording is more consistent. So to use the compressor tool, once again, we go to the effect menu and come down to compressor. And once again, I'm not messing with any of the default settings here and I'm going to hit okay. And once I hit okay, you're gonna see these high volume peaks right here 
come down a little bit so they're more consistent with the rest of the recording. So I'll hit OK. Let Audacity work its magic. And there we go. So as we can see here, the volume of my entire recording is nice and consistent. Okay, let's see what's next in the guide. Okay, now I'm going to export my edited audio file once again as a WAV file and eventually bring that back into Camtasia and replace the existing audio file with the edited one. So to do that, I'm going to go to File and Export Audio and make sure that the file is going to go into my double fertilization video folder, and it is, and make sure that I'm exporting it as a WAV file as well. And I'm going to add to the file name Edited just to remind myself that this is the audio file that I've finished editing. And I'll hit Save and I'm not going to enter any metadata, so I'll just hit OK. And I can see in my finder window here that here is my newly edited audio file. And at this point I'll close Audacity because I don't need it anymore. And I'm not going to save these changes because I already have the original file and it doesn't take me that long to edit the audio, although you can save the Audacity file if you want to. So next I'm going to bring my edited audio file back into Camtasia. And when I do that, I'm going to make sure that I go all the way back to the beginning of the recording. Okay, and I'm going to just now drag my edited audio file right into Camtasia. all the way to the beginning there, and I'm gonna zoom all the way in just to make sure, yep, it's right at the beginning. And if I've done this correctly, the audio signals of the edited audio and the original should line up exactly. So I'm going to make sure that that's the case. I'm going to zoom in all the way and make sure they line up exactly. And it looks like they do. This one looks like it's lower because I haven't enlarged this track yet, but that's fine. Okay, so now I'm going to delete the track with my original audio on it because I don't want it anymore. So I'm going to right click on track two and remove that track and hit okay. Okay, and now this is my edited audio now layered over my original video. And I'm just gonna play that just to once again make sure that my voice sounds okay after all that editing. Hey everyone. Okay, I think that sounds fine. Let's see what's next. Okay, we've placed the edited audio track into Camtasia and aligned it with the original and deleted the original. Now I'm going to either increase or decrease the volume of my audio track in Camtasia as necessary just to make sure that it's loud enough to be comfortably heard by whoever's listening to it on a computer or a phone. So I recommend that you do this by setting the volume of your computer or whatever device you're viewing the video on to about half volume and then change the volume of the audio track once again by dragging this line up and down until your audio is clearly heard at about half volume. So my computer is set to a little bit higher than half volume, but that's okay, you get the idea. Just from experience, I know that I need to set it to about 180% or so for this to be clearly heard. In the last video, we examined the structure of the pollen. Okay, sounds pretty good. Let's see what's next. Okay, and um, there's a last sort of optional step here, and that's to check that the entire audio track has a similar volume. And I do this just by zooming all the way out and making sure that um, none of these lines are, you know, super high or they're much higher than the others. And it doesn't look like they really are. I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit so I can see the top of those lines and make sure that none of them are much higher than the others. But if they were, 
I could just use audio points to bring their volume down a little bit just to make sure that the entire volume of the whole recording is consistent. Okay. And when you're doing this, I suggest airing on the side of too loud because it's really easy for your listener just to turn down the volume a little bit. But you don't want it super loud because then you might blow out their ears if uh, you know their volume happens to be all the way up when they're starting the video. Okay, so I think I'll end here for now. And in the next video, I'll show you how to finish editing the audio and video using Camtasia. Okay, so at this point, go through the steps that I went through in this video for your video. Complete parts one through three in that guide, which you can find below this video. And I think once you do, you'll find that the overall quality of your video is much improved. Now, in the next video, we'll finish up editing with Camtasia. See you then.